taking a step back, maybe you could tell the audience, you actually were also on the forefront in high school. You basically said, I'm not happy what they're giving me, the syllabus, reading, and other stuff, and you basically created your own curriculum. Could you just briefly discuss? And it's almost like the same exact thing with the books, being ahead of it and people having to catch up. Well, actually, what actually, I not had people, to do, but the establishment. What I had to do was I had to read what I was assigned to read, and what I wanted to read. So it was two different things. You see, because uh, if you cannot keep up academically with the curriculum that they're giving you, then they'll just say that you're not intelligent, or that you have attention deficit disorder, or that you're not competitive, or that you have some kind of DNA inferiority, or they'll invent some kind of a problem for you and then slap the label on your face and give you some drugs to take, you know, to medicate yourself. So I had to actually master the academic curriculum that I was given in high school and in college and then create an alternative curriculum. So in addition to uh, reading all of the foolishness that I was assigned in high school and college, I also read uh, back then Carter G. Woodson's Miseducation of the Negro, W.E.B. Du Bois, The Souls of Black Folk, E. Franklin Frazier's The Black Bourgeoisie. Um, uh, I read uh, Frederick Douglass, his narrative. I read Autobiography of Malcolm X, everything, everything, everything that uh, could give me the answer to the question, what happened? You know, because when you're young and black in America and you, you come outside your project building, that is the question that is looming over your head. Like if you were a comic character, there would be a box and it would say, what happened here? You know? <laughs> like, and I think if you, if you don't have the patience or the discipline to read and to study, you'll never get the answer to that question. And you'll start to think that you're living that way because you deserve it. Or that uh, the reason why your mother and father don't have any money is because they're just stupid. They're just not as smart as everybody else. Uh, you'll never understand uh, where wealth is, where it was, who took what, you know, who conquered who. You'll never understand the movement of power if you don't have the discipline and the patience to sit down and read. So, but do you? But do you think? Did it surprise you that it took so long for some of these great pieces of work that you're mentioning to make it into the education system? Again, nobody was. You had to do research to find this <coughs> material. Know that it exists out there. A lot of people back then and even now, they don't know it exists. Mm -hmm. uh, were you surprised it's taken so long to change the curriculum, even slightly? No. The definition of power mm -hmm. uh, or education in a system of power is to maintain the current e arrangement of power. The educational system in America is to maintain the current arrangement of power. So if the current arrangement of power is that the privileged people are in control, the rest of us are not going to be given any materials that would give us the resources or tools that we need to get into control yeah. because it's to maintain the present uh, position of power in the society. So, no, it's not surprising. I'm just thankful that when I was a young girl, there were people in my community who um, took an interest in my mind, in the development of my mind for some reason, maybe heard me talk or something, and then said, hey, you know, I like this little girl, let me help her out. And so I used to uh, compete in constitutional oratorical contests. I had to memorize the Constitution and speak extemporaneously about all of the amendments. I had a tutoring after school with uh, Mr. John Desain, who was a member of the Board of Education, and he introduced me to all these different titles and American poets. And I got to go to a lot of special places and special programs like Princeton Educational Testing Service and all of these things because everybody wanted to know what happened here. <laughs> when they came across me because they would say, okay, wait a minute, she's, she's not following. We've given her the processing to be conquered and she's not being processed properly. So we need to figure out what happened here. <laughs> and so I was always invited to participate in all of these kinds of um, testing events, and I was told all kinds of things when I was young, but in my mind, I was clear. <laughs>